Look at those stairs. Beautiful for sure, lots of them too. A good hike, especially carrying camera bags and tripods. But the reward at the end of it all is well worth it. A glimpse inside the room where the decision more than a billion Catholics are waiting for will be made. So this is it, the famous Sistine Chapel, where all the voting will take place starting tomorrow. This is a rare glimpse inside. Usually when tours go through here, they don't let cameras be used at all, but today they're letting a few journalists in just to take a look as the last minute preparations are underway. Some of the workmen in here putting the finishing touches on the tables, the desks, the chairs, where the cardinals will be sitting at. The Vatican is worried about leaks and listening devices, so they've installed jamming equipment, and it works. I tried to tweet from inside, didn't connect. Cell phones and other communications equipment will be banned. Cardinals will be carefully checked. In fact, each has to promise not to reveal anything that happens in this room. The penalty for breaking the rules, the hook, excommunication, thrown out of the church, the cardinal who leaves this room as pope inherits the leadership of a huge multi-billion dollar corporation that is in somewhat of a shambles, starting with the very inner working of its own government. And as those cardinals go in, we all join them spiritually. We can't be in the Sistine Chapel. With a handful of other journalists, we got a quick peek inside the Apostolic Palace. Again, cameras rarely get this far. Before the new man at the top can get a handle on all of the church's other considerable issues, he has to fix how this place operates. We're up now in the kind of Vatican bureaucracy when you hear about all the troubles in the Vatican in terms of the major offices, the Secretary of State. That's all the way down here. It's down this hallway where all those offices are just across. Look at the, those are the papal apartments just over on the other side. That's where the Pope lives where he resides. But down here, as we said, the papal bureaucracy, this is where the Vatican works and breathes every day. The big decisions are made along this hallway. And most of all the scandals that are alleged to have taken place in terms of the way the Vatican is run have been centered on these offices along here. Key places. including the one at the end of these fresco-covered hallways, the office of the Secretary of State. Whoever the new pope puts in this room may well determine how successful he can be in cleaning up the problems of the past. It's so important that some observers feel someone in the running for the top job would be wise to let other cardinals know who he'd put in state and how tough that person would be in dealing with the mess the place is said to be in. See that terrace, that balcony, just off the edge of the Vatican building. One of the balconies belonging to one of the members of the Vatican bureaucracy. This is the Secretary of State's spot. Great location to watch what happens on that balcony there, just off St. Peter's Basilica, where the new Pope will appear after being elected by the uh, Cardinals. And there'll be a crowd of hundreds of thousands out here in St. Peter's Square waiting to see just who it is. Just like it was in this same square eight years ago for Benedict, a square crowded with pilgrims here to see their new leader, just like it was for all the Pope's previous. Will it be a crowded square again this year? Almost certainly. What may be different is the expectation level. Who will the new Pope be? How will he deal with the problems that face his church, their religion? There's no question there is a feeling here that this decision is unlike those past ones. This time, there has to be a clear signal that a new era is beginning. In a matter of hours or days, we'll know if that will be the case.